What's up, everybody? It's Jesse Ziegler. And Quinn Cody. And it's another episode of Dakar Rally Daily brought to you by Climb Technical Riding Gear. Today, our OEM sponsor is Husqvarna. Yes. Pioneers. That's right. I think I'm going to get me one of those smart pillins. 401. See if I can make an adventure bike out of it. Yeah, you could, they could, you could just buy an adventure bike. I've got an adventure bike. That, that'd be easier. But I want a smaller adventure bike. Yeah, well. I like the 401 engine. I like that 390 platform. That thing's badass. <laughs> I love that thing. You can just rip it up. Yeah. Husqvarna 901 Norton is, cool. is a pretty good motorcycle. The 901 Norton is pretty fantastic. If you want to go too. adventure and have the proper equipment for the for the job. There you go, being reasonable again. Yeah, well. Well, check out Husqvarna if you're interested in a motorcycle, because I love them. Uh, thanks also to Rally Navigator. Again, these guys are looking at road books all day. And most people wouldn't know what a road book is without Rally Navigator. I think that's a safe assumption. Or without us. <laughs> right, without us. Because we, we do such a good job bringing it to the broader audience. We do a great job um, to pat ourselves on the back, but <laughs> telling them about Rally Navigator also helps. Yes. Check yeah. Rally Check Navigator it crushes it, and uh, definitely our American rally people would not be uh, what they are today without Rally Navigator. So Yeah, for sure. Um, also, thanks to Moto Minded for sponsoring our Dakar Rally Daily Fantasy Derby, where you can play fantasy sports Dakar Rally style and uh, pick some winners, pick some losers, pick whoever you want. Go to chainslayer.com slash Dakar and check it out. That's going to give you an opportunity to get really involved in this race on a personal level. Start some rivalries with your friends or your mortal enemies. That's right. Or just lose like I did today. Yeah, it happens. Uh, we'll get into the rest of our sponsors a little bit later today, but uh, we got a lot to talk about today. Um, pretty eventful day as far as time going away for some people, uh, consistent racers being consistent again. And, you know, stage four went down today after a mini marathon stage, we'll call it. Yeah. Uh, it was a big day today again, but tricky navigation with uh, some traffic on course really kind of left some people out to dry today. Yeah, it sounds like they were going through a little bit more of a, an active area. So there was there was a little closer into a, to a city and uh, there was some construction work going on out there and some different things that maybe threw, uh, threw the guys, a few guys for a loop. Yeah, we have some really cool footage from Anthony, our correspondent on the ground, about some locals driving around. And it, it kind of looks like, you know, a little bit of a Southern California glamour scene almost in some ways <laughs> without all the energy drinks. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the Dakar now is huge in Saudi. And I mean, we have a, you know, Saudi driver, uh, Yazid, leading the overall in the in the car category. And so he's a literally a national hero over there. And uh, so, yeah, the Dakar is coming coming big in Saudi Arabia and the locals want to get out and, and uh, you know, participate. Yeah, they're chasing the celebrities. Uh, speaking of celebrities, here's your stage rankings today. The top 10 overall, stage four, Nacho Cornejo on the factory Monster Energy Honda team took the win today, uh, about a two minute and 59 second gap over second place American Ricky Brabeck, his teammate and motorhome partner. And then uh, KTM's Kevin Benavides coming in third. He's only about three minutes behind Nacho. And you can see these guys are really sort of setting themselves up to advance up into the general standings and really control the race from the front. Um, really great race by all three of these yahoos. Yeah. Another good ride today was Ross Branch in fourth, and he was able to keep himself up in that in that top group of guys in the general classification. So he, he did lose the, uh, the overall general classification lead, but he's still really close, you know, to he's actually sitting in. He's just dropped back one spot, right? Yeah. He's sitting in second now. So yeah, only, uh, only a minute off the lead. Right. So. Really good ride by Ross again. And well, actually he, he admittedly says it's not a great ride today because he had some crashes and, damage his bike a little bit. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but um, a lot of challenges out there today. A lot of people had some navigation issues, but it seems like the guys that were up front skirted through some of those challenges fast and kind of just left the rest of the field. Yeah, definitely. You know, that it, it seems that the, that first group of, of three or four guys got through and then it started getting a little mixed up as the further back in the field, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting because 
you know, normally the guys opening the stage are, are the ones that struggle, but, uh, yeah, running into an issue and then figure it out for everybody else right. behind them. But I think, you know, they had, uh, they had these guys out front and kind of collecting <laughs> bonus points and doing some good navigation. I know Ricky was out front for a long time and, and also Kevin. Mm -hmm. So I think those two, those two kind of rode together and, and opened the stage. Right. Right behind Ross Branch in uh, fourth place was fifth place Adrian Van Beveren, another Honda up there. Luciano Benavides got the Husqvarna into sixth place today. Joan Barreda, a uh, hero in seventh place. Again, we got two heroes in the top 10. We got a Sherco in the top 10 today with Rui Concalves. Con Great pronunciation on my yes. part today. Portuguese rider. Yep. Sherco. Uh, and then Skylar Howes had another good day. Uh, clawing back some time, being safe in ninth today. And Romain Dumontier got 10th place overall today. Yep. So we were missing a few, uh, a few big names in the, in the top 10. That's true. You got to keep scrolling down to get some of these favorites again today after some mistakes, you know, notable Toby price sitting down in 15th. Yeah, uh, another, another 15 minutes that, that Toby lost today, which is really, really tough for him. Yep. And then Daniel Sanders, we have him sitting down in 20th place today, losing, Almost 20 minutes, 18 minutes lost today for Sanders. Yep. Also, Quintanilla, the Honda teammate, 18 minutes and 39 seconds back today. Um, reports coming out are that there may have been some sort of a work vehicle out on course that was sort of in the way on the race and caused people some confusion and they couldn't really get around it or they didn't get around it cleanly because they're probably thinking, why would I have to go around a truck? Yeah, I I think it sounds like, yeah, there was, there was something, you know, they're doing some oil exploration and they had some heavy equipment out there working and maybe the, the guys got a little bit confused. I don't, I don't know that it was in the way of the track, but a lot of times when you see a, a road or a track, maybe that wasn't in the road book and, and they kind of gravitate towards it rather than just following the right cap heading or something, it kind of sucks them over towards the... Mm -hmm the activity because they think, oh, well, there's something over there. So that must be the right road. And, <laughs> and they go that way like um, moth, moth or, to a or whatever. Yeah. They, yeah it could be know. just a confusing spot because you're not used to seeing trucks yet out there. And yep. all of a sudden there's vehicles and people. Yeah. Cause you know, maybe that obviously that wasn't in the road book. So mm -hmm. yeah. Who knows? Should we get into some quotes and hear from these guys today? Yeah. I mean, I think the general classification is, is, uh, interesting. Oh, now. Yeah. You know, we had, we had a change for the first time we mentioned, uh, Nacho Conejo took over the overall lead. He did. He's a uh, one minute, 15 seconds ahead of Ross branch. And then another four minutes, he's a uh, almost five minutes ahead of his teammate, Ricky Brabeck. And if you look at the screen right now, or if you go to the results standing, you'll see all three of these guys have collected bonus points and that's really putting them out in front. Along with fourth place, Kevin Benavides, they've really gobbled up some of these opening stage bonus points. Yeah, and Ricky, he he actually kind of uh, shrank his his gap to Ross Branch, and so now he's only four minutes, 56 seconds off of the lead. Mm -hmm. um, but then the, the big jump, you know, these top three have really separated themselves. Uh, there's a big jump to Kevin Benavides in fourth, and he's 20 minutes back. Yeah, they're in a different league right now. So yeah, just the the strategy, the way that these guys have played it so far has is working in their favor, and we're gonna kind of see. Obviously, coming into these next few days, we're gonna see what, how these these different strategies play out because you know you have, I mean, I don't think that that Toby's on a on a strategy or Sanders are on a strategy. I think that they're kind of getting into the to the area where. <laughs> You know, it's getting desperate for them. Danger zone. Um, because as soon as you start going back behind behind uh, Adrian Van Beveren, you know, you're you're over 30 minutes back to Luciano Benavides, Quintanilla's, you know, another 31 minutes, and then Toby Price is is 34 minutes back. Uh, Daniel Sanders not even in the in the top 10. Yep, um, and he's 40 you know. minutes almost out. Yep, and the same like Skylar Howes here is, is 48 minutes off the lead. So think of this. This is stage four and... Uh, 40 minutes. 40 minutes. In the so top 10. 48 minutes. Yeah, that's a that's a big gap for the top 10 to be kind of spread out. Um, we don't know if there's going to be that much opportunity to make up time later in the race. Like clearly there's more time available in these longer dune stages to make up, but 20, 30, 40 minutes... 
in a day? Is that possible? Yeah. But who knows? You know, this, we don't this know. cryo thing, there's going to be, there's talk of maybe a inverted start order or a, cho- a choice of start order based on tomorrow's results. So, yeah, we just don't know. More on that later as we got more info trickling in from the bivouac now. Um, our boy Johnny Campbell's out there trying to get us some info on this chrono stage starting order. Also, Skylar House is giving us a little update he's sending in soon. Uh, so stay tuned. We'll get more information as we can. But the main headline here is top three separating themselves from the rest of the field in the overall, and that's Nacho Cornejo, Ross Branch, and Ricky Brabeck. That's right. Let's hear from those guys. Let's see if we get some quotes. All right, first up, we're going to hear from Nacho Cornejo, stage winner today. Second stage he's won on the rally so far, and, uh, you know, he's sitting in pretty pretty good spot at the top of the standings. Nacho, new GC leader. How was your day? Hey, guys. Uh, today we had a good stage. It uh, was very tricky and, and complete, a little bit of everything in the ring. So we did a good job. I started six, so had some lines, passed a couple of guys, and and then rode pretty good uh, until the end. We rode with Ross Branch for some kilometers, so it was good fun, and I arrived uh, pretty good at the end. Today was a little bit shorter than the previous days, but it wasn't uh, definitely easy. It was very tricky navigation and rough terrain too. Did you have any strategy to set yourself up for tomorrow? Well, uh, the idea was to be a little more back for tomorrow, uh, but if I had an opportunity to win some minutes for the overall and keep doing difference to the other guys, I was going to take it. That was the case, and I just took the decisions to go with it and, and don't make any strategy or, or break, let's say, and just uh, take advantage of the opportunity I was having, and tomorrow we'll have to deal with it, open the way in the dunes, but it's a short stage, so hopefully we don't lose too much. Tomorrow's short, tomorrow's pretty long. Long liaison, but only 118 kilometers of special, so it's pretty short. And the day after, it's very, very long, it's a 48 hour one. So we have a couple of days of a lot of sand, but maybe some strategy thinking on the second week, so we will see. We'll keep doing what we're doing one day at a time, stage by stage. Love it. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like that top group got, got through one of those tricky navigation sections clean, and then somebody came in and screwed it all up, and it looked like everybody else spinning went wrong too. Bit. Yeah, and, and that happens. Once one guy goes wrong, yeah. it tends to create a chain reaction, and then if, if they see dust and they follow tracks, maybe they're following the wrong tracks and or they're following the dust, and then it's easy to yeah. get hung out there. Easy, easy. Let's hear from Ricky Brabeck, uh, Monster Energy Honda teammate to Nacho Cornejo and sitting in third overall in the general standings now. Oh, the day was good. Um, you know, I started second today, which, I mean, yesterday, that was kind of the plan was to start up front. That way, uh, you know, we can lose a little bit of time, you know, for strategy for tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, I catch Kevin early on, and, man, he was riding really well. So um, I'm not sure at, at the refueling. I think I was second on time, so... Uh, I, I don't know what I am from there because I didn't. I, I only got like a quick word, but uh, yeah. Anyways, happy to be here. I uh, rode with Kevin for maybe like 150 k today, so that was pretty nice. Um, you know, we had some fun just now in the dunes, but yeah. Uh, today's the, the finish of first marathon. Now you know we're gonna go back to the bivouac with the motorhomes, prep the bikes, uh, play in the sand again tomorrow, and then we have that chrono stage. So. Uh, after this chrono stage, 48 hours, we have a rest day. Looking forward to that. Everybody's looking forward to that rest day already, I'm sure, after the brutal start to this Dakar. Yeah, it's pretty rough, and, and you can see it in Ricky's face if you're, if you're watching on YouTube. There's a, We put up a photo of him. He, he looks a little rough. He's kind of looks like uh, me getting out of bed in the morning. Yeah, and these liaison stages that we keep talking about, they're starting to eat into these guys too, these 100 miles sitting on the road before you start racing in the cold and then after you're done racing, you get back on it, and you're sweaty, and then you get cold again. It's just mm-hmm. relentless well, torture. Yeah, that's Dakar. Yeah. The spirit of torture. Welcome to Dakar. That should be the new slogan. Yes. It's going to be terrible, <laughs> but you're going to love it because you're a sadistic weirdo. For our entertainment. Yeah. Aren't you entertained? All right. Next up, let's talk to Kevin Benavides, yesterday's stage winner, and did a pretty good job leading out today. Really good job, I'd say. He had a successful day today. Yeah. 
Yeah, good birthday. I I did a good work. I I really enjoy to open. I really like I, uh, actually. But uh, anyway, the stay was was fast, but uh, really fast. But a lot of so, of navigation. So I was really focused on my roadbook. Then when I arrived to to refueling, I saw my rear tire was with one big cut. So then after that, I tried to to go in a good pace, just using good the traction and the throttle. Um, I was a little bit scary, but uh, yeah, finally arrived. So all good with the bike. Uh, so we continue. We continue. Yeah, it's another T-shirt slogan. Next to Ricky Brabex, the entire desert, the whole desert is a danger. Yes. <laughs> we continue. Great stuff from Kevin. He's, you know, he's he's the top KTM and the only KTM in contention at the moment, which is something to say. He uh, he sounds pretty good. Like he's, yeah. you can see he sounds upbeat. He's he's pretty uh, motivated, and you know some of the other guys don't quite sound as uh, enthusiastic. So it's good it's good to see Kevin, and especially after that after that leg injury before the start, it's like wow, yeah, you know, he's stepping up. He's stepping it up. So hopefully he can hold it together for the next eight or so days. <laughs> Sounds so bad when you say there's eight more days I, of this. I can't believe this is only the fourth <laughs> stage. I, I feel like it's been going on forever already. Yeah. And I can't imagine what these guys are feeling. Uh, it's it's beating them down, that's for sure. Uh, somebody who you can't tell that he's being beat down ever is Ross Branch. He had a bit of an off day today, but he's still sitting really great in the overall standings. Let's hear from Ross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought uh, I'd try the handlebars, the bent style today. Uh, <laughs> no, it was uh, it was a rough day for me. One of the days I'd rather forget. Crashed at kilometer 40, just trying to look at the road book, and I hit a rock. And then I crashed again now 20 kilometers before the finish, just going into the dunes. There was a bit of camel grass hidden in the sand and just threw me over the handlebars. But uh, I'm okay. The bike's, bike's repairable. I don't think I lost too much time. And uh, not too sure what's happening behind me. Uh, we, we don't know what happened at the refuel. There was no one coming. So just have to get back to the bivouac, fix the bike for tomorrow. Two crashes. Two crashes today for Ross. He's still super happy. Love that guy. He's, he starts off every quote laughing. Yeah. It's, I think it's amazing. Anybody should have someone like Ross Branch on their team just to kind of like elevate everybody's mood at the end of a tough day. Right. Super, super cool guy. Also, That's he's winning things yeah I mean, he's, <laughs> he's having a pretty good rally, so yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be laughing too i guess not just a happy guy he's <laughs> also ripping out there great stuff from those guys um he didn't lose that much time today yeah he lost time but he's not certainly isn't yeah, out mean, of he, any contention he finished he's, fourth on the day and you know he's still second in the in the general so yeah and and i don't know that i would really want to be the guy that's leading the general classification right now like mm -hmm. it's almost a little bit of a relief to you know, lose, okay, he's one minute off the lead in the general, and he's, so he's still there, right? That can change yeah. at, at any moment, and, you know, I, I think that's almost a better position than having that pressure of, of leading the overall and mm -hmm. worrying about leading out stages and losing time and whatever. Yeah, the weird part about this year, though, is that to be out of that pressure, you can only go to third place. You're still kind of in that pressure zone because mm -hmm. you can't go to fourth place because that's 20 minutes. Yeah. behind you're almost more pressure on the opposite spectrum where you feel rushed and you have to gain time because that window of people that are within 20 minutes is only three people yeah the only thing that's going to break up this window is is some attrition with these top three yeah these guys falling off breaking down you know mm -hmm. so we're getting seriously hung out in a big dune stage somewhere yeah. where somebody can just gobble up 20 minutes in a day which, yep. which we've seen happen before in Dakar's past. It just hasn't really happened in Saudi Arabia that much because well, it, the, it, it had happened here a few years ago, yeah, the way they recently. had it, when it was these high speed stages and, yeah. and guys could ride from the back really fast. But now mm. with this bonus time and the increased difficulty of navigation, it hasn't quite been happening the same way. Yeah, These guys really took advantage of jumping out early and gobbling up bonus points. But one one bad note in the road book, one uh, little stumble, and yeah, you could easily lose 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So, Here's some insight into the day and possibly some stuff yesterday. Skylar just sent us this note, um, a little bit of insight into how they're playing, maybe maybe playing a bit of strategy to get into this 48-hour chrono stage with a revert, inverted start order or choose your own start order. So here's a quick note from Skylar about his day. Um, he's really come back strong after a couple 
bad days in the beginning, and we're excited to hear what he has to say. Yo, guys, just checking in here after day four or stage four. Um, today was a repeat of last year's stage that was like totally underwater. Um, and of course it was dry this year, but the trucks and the cars and everyone like made such gnarly ruts out there. So the, the course was really tore up. The first part of it, it's like in this twisty, sandy section that's like really difficult for the navigation. But like afterwards, you get out into this big, wide open, like clay plateau uh, mixed with rocks and stuff. And so it's a little kind of, you know, sketchy out there. Um, but just before this, there was a like hidden waypoint, a WPC down in a canyon. And it looks like a lot of people got caught out there, um, myself including. And the reason why is if you, uh, you, you like, you had to stay perfect onto the meters uh, because there's all these big giant oil uh, rig trucks. They like go out and search for oil out under the ground and they blade new roads wherever they go. And so if you didn't stay like perfect onto the cap, onto that, or on the meter, on the course or like track that you were on, then you could get off and get onto one of these like new bladed trails by these big giant machines, which is what happened with me. Um, I kind of came in a little bit too hot and opened the corner, like blew the corner and hopped onto a different track that was kind of going at the right cap. And then nothing really added up after that. So I just kind of went off piste and I saw that the waypoint was down in this wash. So I just went down into the wash and rode up and down the wash until I clicked the waypoint and then, you know, got back on the correct track. But, you know, lost a few minutes there. But while I was doing that too, I had a technical issue with the bike um, and ended up having to ride like the next 100 kilometers without a clutch. Well, actually probably longer than that. But um, yeah, so I had to manage, you know, kind of manage the day and couldn't really go so fast because of no clutch. It's kind of interesting how uh, how <laughs> useful a clutch is to like jumping over G outs and, you know, cornering and stuff. So yeah, I had to manage all the way to the finish with that, um, but still ended up pretty decent. A lot of the other guys made really big mistakes and uh, got lost quite a bit. So uh, even though I lost time today, I still have a decent finish, which actually puts me into a good position for stage five tomorrow. And the finishing order of stage five is reverse uh, for the uh, for the 48 hour chrono stage. So if you have a good finish tomorrow, like say you win the stage tomorrow, then you can start last uh, for the chrono stage, which would be ideal. So um, yeah, kind of in a good position now, and we're gonna start making super long liaisons and short specials now, headed down into the empty quarter. All right, see ya. Really flipping the script here. First of all, I'd like to apologize to Skylar for the photo that I'm showing on YouTube. What are you talking about? That's that's a great photo. Look Skylar. at him. He looks like he's doing that. some sun salutation yoga out there trying to warm up at this stage. Yeah. And I didn't pick this photo. The, yeah. This well, is if you're, live from the website. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see. Look Skyler's. at him just stretching out. Looks like a lizard. Yeah, he's just getting warm in the sun. Just a, soaking it up up there, getting some solar power. Interesting stuff. Thanks, Skylar, for that explanation. The first explanation we've heard about the 48-hour chrono stage starting order, which is you know, a strategic yeah, massive strategic tool. Yeah, and I, I've reached out to a few people. We haven't got in any confirmation on exactly w what the starting order is going to be. They don't officially know yet, but um, really you know, keeping them guessing. Like, rumors that go around the bivouac, and you yeah, know, different bivouac. team managers pick up on this stuff, and so uh, it sounds like there's a possibility that that chrono stage will be started in verse. So meaning after tomorrow, the whoever wins tomorrow's stage will start last and whoever finishes last will start first and open the tracks, which can create its own set of problems, right? You have inexperienced guys opening the stage, there's tracks to follow, mm -hmm. um, all kinds of interesting things could happen on that chrono stage. So they're, in, they're making an incentive to perform tomorrow though, 
to set yourself up for that stage, not just take tomorrow off and have yeah. a picnic, Daniel Sanders style a couple of years ago, where he had a picnic to let people go by. And uh, do you think they'll let them choose a starting order, kind of like they do in the prologue? The top guys, we don't know. That'd I don't know. I mean, according to what Skyler said, it was inverted, mm -hmm. but uh, we haven't heard anything otherwise. I know I'm waiting for Johnny Campbell to get back to me on a little, uh, with a little more detail, but he said that they aren't, it's not clear at this moment. Mm, interesting. Keep you guessing when the team managers and personnel don't know. <laughs> you just yeah. got to race a big day and yeah, guess. And, and then you think about, I mean, it would make sense that they would want to do this because they want to get the slower guys further along to the to these oh the, the remote bivouacs, bivouacs. yeah right. because right that's a it, logistic issue like screaming yeah, i mean four o'clock i'd imagine it, it doesn't get it gets dark pretty early there this probably time of year so similar to here it's probably dark at six yeah. o'clock or whatever so that means that they would they don't want a guy that still has another at four o'clock they still have another 100 kilometers or 150 kilometers to ride right to get to the bivouac that and then a bunch of people out in the dark and then they don't want the leaders, the fast guys, to pass the last bivouac and then continue on and, uh, who knows, you know, finish the stage in the dark. Wow, it's going to be really exciting to hear how that plays out tomorrow at the end of the day and then see what happens on that 48-hour chrono, like how far these guys can get. Can they finish the whole stinking thing in a day? We don't know. We don't know. That's what makes it exciting. Uh, we do know what happened today in a couple bad days. Like, I don't think it's improper to say these guys had a bad day today we have some quotes here from toby price and daniel sanders about their rough day so here's toby on the day and we'll get to daniel next what can i say it's just a tricky day but um yeah look all in all uh we're here at the finish line wasn't um yeah just too many navigation mistakes so uh yeah we just i came across one um like big work vehicle and uh yeah, it kind of put me off track a little bit. From there on, it was just disaster, disaster, after disaster. But uh, yeah, we're we're at the finish line. Um, that's the main thing, and um, we'll see what uh, I guess this chrono stage tomorrow will bring. So uh, could be could be quite interesting. It could um, bring the race back close. But yeah, I gave away a little bit too much time today. Too much time given away today. You don't really hear these guys make admissions that they made big mistakes in the corporate PR world <laughs> of, of this stuff. But here you can see Toby in his face that he's disappointed in the day and disappointed with the time they lost. Okay. Yeah, it's it's hard and it's a helpless feeling out there when you when you can't find the right track and you know the clock's ticking, you're losing time. And, you know, it, you, I know I've thought back like, oh, if I only had to just, you know, turned a little sooner or done this or done that, and, you know, you beat yourself up over it for a while because it's just, you know, but coulda shoulda woulda fact is is once the time's gone it's gone you you can't get it back so he needs to move move forward here's daniel sanders similar situation but a little bit of insight into actually what happened to him he was actually stopped on tracking for a few minutes or it seemed like he was stopped on tracking for a couple minutes and now we know why i lost my um my rear tank cap after the refuel so that i lost all my fuel pretty much out of the back and that was splashing all over my leg first i thought it was my camel back and then um yeah it was just burning my leg and then i was like i stopped and checked and it was fuel so i had to try and save as much fuel as i could um yeah and then just lost a bunch of extra time there so rough day but we'll keep um keep on fighting can't have your fuel emptying out on your leg when you have to ride hundreds of kilometers in the desert no yeah that's that's a, a bummer mistake for him and i think you know after the refueling he probably just didn't secure the cap tight enough and fatigue things happen yeah yeah they just had a mini marathon stage last night they got in late got in cold rode all day it's, it's minimizing mistakes out there and it's catching some guys out some of the best in the world right now yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's it, the fatigue is already starting to set in, and man, I I can't imagine looking at like part two of stage six after this marathon bivouac. These guys are going to be smoked, and rest they're going to be ready for that rest day. That rest day can't come soon enough. Um, to give you a little insight into how the race course looked today, our guy Anthony, he's he's commuting back to the bivouac right now. He's got like a two hour drive. And uh, this is actually a pretty fun video and quote from him as <laughs> he's in the back of a truck with a local.
this afternoon uh, until the track got beat in and you know the spectators kind of knew where to stay away from but yeah another long day for everybody I think I haven't spoken to anybody except just be driving so maybe I'll learn more from the podcast than I can offer today but it's fun out here speak to you soon <laughs> he looks like he's having a great time <laughs> bouncing the back of a Toyota that's cool. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like he uh, he hitched a ride out onto the course with uh, with some locals, and there's there's some spectator zones I think in t- today's stage, and so he got to get out there and and uh, watch a little bit of racing, which is cool for him. And we've just been trying to scrape up what we can from quotes and videos and whatnot. So uh, yeah, good good stuff from him. Give yeah. you a little bit of what it's like to be out there in the dunes. Um, I'll play another clip. Uh, let me see if I can rack it up where he actually has. And he has some footage of the locals basically just driving around in the dunes like you would at a sand dune of like an OHV area. But you could have Skylar coming over a dune kind of into traffic. So I'll play that right now after I rack it up. And these guys, you know, the locals don't really know what line the bikes are going to come on until they they start coming, right? So they're just out there kind of playing around. And then all of a sudden, first bike comes and it's, uh, it's on. It's chaos. So here's that clip. Ooh, that's that's a little sketchy. Yeah, if if you're uh, listening to the podcast and obviously not watching on YouTube, that it's a rider coming over a dune and and there's cars crisscrossing in front of the dunes and spectators kind of all around in the background and and the rider comes over and uh kind of waves his hand like hey guys why get the hell out of the way (laughs) why are there jeeps here uh, yeah so a little insight into how chaotic it is out there and you know kind of i guess a little behind the scenes uh footage of of what it's like to uh to finish a, a dune stage yeah in saudi arabia seems uh seems pretty intense out there um speaking of dune stages that was that was not a full dune stage as skylar said there was some sort of you know plateaus and stuff like that but we do have more sand coming up especially in tomorrow's stage five it sounds like there's going to be a fairly short dune stage but opportunity to make some time up and shuffle around for the start order whichever that might be (laughs) however that works out yeah, so here's tomorrow's stage. Um, if you're looking at it, we'll describe it here for you. Big, big driving section. Like this is a commute, yeah. right? This is 500 kilometers of the first road section. So they're going to leave the pit in the morning. Yeah, this looks this looks horrible. They're going to ride uh, 260 first, miles. Yeah, first bike rolls out of the out of the bivouac at 4:45 a.m. Oh my god! And they That's have a f- horrific 508 kilometer road section they have to refuel twice on that road section before they get a race their motorcycle yeah that's how much this road section sucks that sucks and it's straight as an arrow if you're watching uh if you're watching on youtube you can see the map it's it's dead straight it doesn't look like there's a turn for 500 kilometers i there's a very real chance somebody could fall asleep while riding on the section it's happened before that is so gnarly and don't forget daniel sanders notoriously crashed leaving town on one of these sort of days early in the morning into a curb so dangers everywhere even on these days where you're just commuting for 500 kilometers yeah Uh, i mean basically they had to do a zoomed out map to show it all show it all so (laughs) it's horrific like this is just brutally tough for these guys miserable and the special stage is only 118 kilometers so you know, not much over 70 miles. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a long way to ride for a, a short, short stage. stage. And, you know, these, these short ones, it, they can be, uh, they can be nasty. They can be hard, you know, because the, the organizers are pretty kind of clever about how they do this. Right. And so sometimes when, when they want to make a really tough section, they'll make them super short. Mm, got you. They don't want guys out there all night, right? Yeah. Um, so the other thing that could be going on is is that it's 
that they're almost just using this as a prologue to establish uh, start order for stage six, the, the chrono stage. That's my gut feeling is they're like, we're going to reset the order here with a almost pick your own starting position for the chrono stage scheme or reverse it. And then you have to get out here. There's probably going to be bonus points available on this short, tiny stage too. So yeah. incentivized to lead I mean, not a, out there. Not a ton of bonus time because it is such a short stage. Yeah. Um, and it looks like there's about a 10 kilometer uh, neutralization in the middle as well. Yeah. So that's uh, that kind of adds to it. They'll have a little bit of time. Normally they wouldn't refuel on a stage like this, mm -hmm. but the neutralization actually kind of gives them a little bit of time to reset and see how they're setting and kind yep. of give themselves the time. So what happens when they roll into these refueling? You heard a bunch of people talking about it today. They roll in and they kind of check their standing. And is that just a mental, like they start kind of mentally thinking about, hey, I got here, check my watch. I know how much time it's been and I know when I started. How does that work out for those guys sort of in real time, time check? Because they don't have a board up there that shows them right. their time, right? They they roughly know where everyone around them has started. Mm -hmm. So they're, you know, they're at two minute gaps or, or whatever. And so they know the gap between the guys. And if they're sitting there and they wait two minutes and nobody comes behind them, then they know they've, they've put some time on, uh, on the people behind them. Uh, same goes for the guys behind. If they arrive at the, at the refueling and no one's there, they then know they, they lost know time. They lost time. Um, or if a guy's just getting ready to leave and they arrive, they can kind of judge. Um, the other thing is there could be some text messages going back and forth from the team saying, you know, you're good, you're split, bad, this, that, the other thing. Um, they're allowed to have, their I don't phones think with they're supposed the to do that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they're not supposed to communicate. But I'm sure it happens, you know, or it, they have someone there that is just mm, saying, Hey, yeah, you, know. you got in at this time. I mean, maybe someone from the organization right. will yeah. kind of give them a little info about time and they can look at their time card and whatnot. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it just gives them an, an idea of where they are. Cool. Yeah. You got to get all the information you can out there when you're going to be out there for how long is this day going to take them tomorrow? Ooh, I don't know. I mean, so I don't know what time. <laughs> Basically, they they ride from first rider rides from 445 a.m. to 1030 p.m. is how long they have. No, 1030 a.m. Oh, is gotcha. how long it's going to take them to ride that six hours. Yeah. And then they start at 1050. So basically they have. 20 minutes from when they arrive at the start of the special to prepare themselves to start racing. All right. Um, and six yeah. hour drive to get to the start of your race tomorrow, guys. And so they're saying, they're saying they'll finish into the bivouac at uh, 1230 tomorrow, Saudi time. So relatively early finish, pretty early finish. Chill yeah. out. And then uh, they can kind of prepare there. themselves for a uh, 48 hour chrono stage. Oh, no, sorry. That's uh one thirty. 1.30. Okay. So, so still control, control opening is at 12.30, but they're, uh, okay. the first bike is expected at 1.30. All right. Maybe so they'll cruise in a little after lunch, be able to have a extended downtime in the afternoon a little bit, and then try to figure out what's going to go on this chrono stage. So hopefully we can get some good updates tomorrow since they'll yeah. be in the pits a long time. For sure. Awesome. Cool. You know, the, the other guy we have not talked about, which mm -hmm. we should, is Mason Klein. We haven't talked about him today. Nope. He had an eventful day yesterday, that's for sure, in an understatement. After yeah. repairing his bike the day before, Mason goes out and breaks down again pretty early and, you know, struggles along all day and essentially was kind of abandoned out there, waiting, you know, similar to what happens to people when they break down on the course. He was sitting there, ends up getting it to go again a couple times somehow, mm -hmm. ends up getting into the marathon the service, service area, life. which was two hour time window from when you get in there to work on it. So that's not a lot of time to replace an entire engine. And that was their plan. Replace the engine again. Yeah. I don't know what and repairs what they, they made, but <laughs> they got him in. It sounds like it was pretty late last night that he got into the bivouac, maybe 1 AM. Yeah. Um, you know, so he probably didn't get to bed till who knows when, who knows if he um, slept. had to start early this morning once again. And, uh, but he did finish the stage today, so that's a good sign. So it looks like he just kind of limped his way through today and um, get into somewhere where they can do a proper service on the bike and get him ready for this uh, this stage six that's going to be so gnarly. Yeah, he finished in the 50s, I think, today overall, which you know doesn't mean a whole lot for him. He's just trying to get to the finish at this point. I think he's nine hours behind. Yeah, he, <laughs> after all the penalties and you know time time stuff. 
he needs to get to the rest day. He needs to get somewhere where he can reset and the service crew can do a good, uh, a good service on the bike and he can reset his body. Now that he's had, you know, a couple late nights and long, long days that the exposure to the elements, just being out for, for two days like that till really late at night is, yeah, is massive. And that wears you down. So he, he needs a little reset and, you know, hopefully they can, they can service the bike and kind of get him, get him ready for this, uh, marathon stage. Everybody's raced four days, but Mason's probably raced an equivalent of like six at this point. He's had a couple extra days on the bike compared yeah, to everybody at else. At least one. <laughs> at least one. <laughs> and you don't want any extra days on the bike out here, kids. No, it's, no, it's, sir. it's, it's brutal. It's beat down time. All right. So big day tomorrow. We'll expect to see what happens with this shakeup and learn more about this, uh, bivouac sort of chrono start order that we just got to figure out and yeah. we're not alone nobody knows what's going on we'll post up some more information as we have it otherwise we'll be back tomorrow morning and hopefully we can get a little more info and uh some more video from anthony and you know get things rolling yeah thank you again to giant loop moto fast company high desert adventures jimmy lewis offroad.com Taco Moto, thank you guys for making this podcast and video series possible. Go check these sponsors out for your gear and for bike parts Ooh. and goodies. Now, who are you going to pick for the win tomorrow, Jesse? Well, I picked Daniel Sanders for the win today, and that resulted in all my other picks sucking royally on the Dakar Rally Daily Fantasy Derby at chainslayer.com slash Dakar. So, uh, I don't know, man. Who do you got to win? I, I don't know. If you want to win today, um, I think Ricky could win. Uh, I yeah. think if he finds out that the incentive to win is you get to pick your starting order, I think he'll throw down in the dunes and win from third. He's starting third tomorrow, right? Yeah, he's starting second. Second tomorrow? Yep. Not not impossible with, with a short stage, a little bit of bonus time? Yeah. Or do you think somebody else is going to win, don't you? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean... I think Toby Price has to, especially if it's uh, if it's inverted. I think like if if Toby f is physically okay and capable and he can he can elevate it, then I think he needs to win tomorrow to set him up for that uh, that marathon stage. But it's not. I, I've bet on Toby for the last three days and he's yeah. let me down each day. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't know. <laughs> There's just a lot of people that can win this stage down here in mm -hmm. these, you know, sixth through tenth position where they should have an advantage in the dunes by following tracks. I mean, you have Skyler, yeah, Joan Bereda, Luciano, Adrian. Yeah, there's just there's <laughs> Toby, just not a lot of time Daniel. available tomorrow. You know, in a seventy mile stage, it's gonna be tight and the, the gaps are gonna be really small. So it's what's the max amount of time you can make up tomorrow, do you think? Uh, I mean with these Five bonus minutes? with these bonuses, I don't know. Ten minutes? You know? No. <laughs> Five. I, yeah, it's going to be, I think, the top 10, in le, you know, aside from people having problems, I think it's going to be within five minutes. So the only way Toby Price and Daniel Sanders are back in the contention by rest day is if a couple people really, really have a problem. Yeah. And they have amazing days. Yeah. Or All this right. chrono stage really just screws everybody up. Plays some drama. Yeah, well, we hope so. We love the drama. So thank you for listening, everybody. Um, we've got more information. Follow us on Dakar Rally Daily Instagram page because we're putting some cool stuff up there from Anthony, and he's going to get in late, so maybe he'll run around and get some quotes from people too. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Husqvarna, for sponsoring us. Thank you always for Climb Technical Riding Gear for being there and being awesome. Cheers, everybody.